Welcome back, Tigers. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the new feature from Salesforce called Forecast Submissions. If your team is exporting forecast reports to keep track of what the forecast was at a specific point in time, then this video is for you. Forecast submissions allow a sales rep or sales manager to submit their forecast on a specific cadence and see the history of their submissions. Now let's go check out how to make forecasting easier for our revenue teams. All right, here we are in Salesforce and our first step is to go into setup. We're gonna to go to forecast settings and then we're going to scroll down and we should see a section that's called allow forecast submissions. We're gonna click the box to allow and click save. And that's it, that's how hard the setup is. So they don't need any other permissions to use forecast submissions. So now we're going to log in as one of our users, Mina. We're gonna to go to the forecast tab. And we can see that there's a new icon. If we hover over this, it says submit forecast. This will allow a user to adjust all their opportunities, adjust their forecast as necessary, and then submit their forecast to their manager. So when a user clicks this button, they'll see their current forecast, and then they'll see the history of what they submitted by date. They'll click submit forecast, and then you'll see a green check mark here, and you'll also see the date. If you click this, you'll be able to see the history. Now the green check mark will stay here for seven days. That's a standard Salesforce thing. And after the seven days is up, the icon will look like this again. They'll be able to submit the forecast or view the history behind the forecast. Now we're gonna log in as Mina's manager. So we'll go to Nate Panther, and then we'll go to the forecast tab. And then we'll come down to March. We'll expand this out and then he can see who has submitted their forecast and who hasn't, and then the last date. So Nate will be able to click on the forecast. They can see the current forecast in blue up here, and then they can see the submission history for Mina right down here. He can see that Roger has not submitted his forecast just yet. And then Nate can submit his forecast to his manager. So as soon as he's done all of his adjustments, judgments, all of those updates, he can click this button and click submit forecast. He can enter in any notes that he wants to up there. So let's just go ahead and put some notes in that I got from good old ChatGPT. Okay, Nate has a check mark and Nate can now review his history and then the notes show up as a link and he can click on the link and see all the notes that he had in his forecast. All right, our next step is to figure out how to report on our forecast submissions. All right, so we're going to go to our report types because we have to set up a brand new report type. We'll go to new custom report type and we're gonna look for forecasting submissions. All right, we're gonna store this in our forecast folder and then we're going to just leave this at forecasting submissions. You can add other objects. You can add your forecasting submission items or forecasting items. That makes one row per category. So you may not want that in your forecasting submission report. That's up to you. But you will be able to get the category and amount if you include the forecasting items, but then your notes are going to be repeated in the report. So it just depends on your use case, what you need. So we're gonna to go to our reports tab. We're gonna create a new report. And then we're going to look for our new report type that we just created called forecasting submissions. And then we're going to add some fields here. We're gonna make this say end date or start date, doesn't matter, is in the current quarter. And then we're going to group this by our end date, maybe by owner as well. And then we're going to add some columns here. So we're gonna do the submission date, status is latest, the note. If you're using different forecasting types, you'll need to add that as a filter as well. And then we want the created by of the submission as well. Now this cool field is latest. 
is going to show you what the latest forecast submission is. So you can see right here is latest is a way that you can filter if you have more than one submission per person within the same week or same, well, actually you can't have it in the same week. You can only do one forecast submission per week. So if you have more than one submission in a month, you'll be able to filter for the latest one for that particular person, which is a nice feature to have. And the created by is the person who submitted the forecast. And then you can see all the notes in the forecast submission. So you'll be able to get the history here when you're using this particular report type. But what you won't be able to get in this report, and this may matter for some of you, is you can't get the forecast category and the amount that's currently in that category. If you have a requirement where you need that information, you can create another report type that is going to allow you to get that. So if we go into setup, and we go back to report types and then we create another report and this one is going to be forecasting submissions with items you should say submission items actually because you can do different ones we'll store this in the forecast folder and then you're going to select here the forecasting submission items We'll click save and close and then we'll go back to our report and we'll create a new report and then we're going to choose that new report type we'll do the same thing that we did on the other one except we'll add in the forecast category as well so here we can add the amount in and we can add the forecasting item category then now you can filter by that. And then if we save and run this, now you have a view that contains the amount per category for each person. But what you can see it does is it repeats the note field over and over. Now there's one more report type that you can set up depending on your requirements. So let's go to forecasting submissions. This one is going to be forecasting submissions with forecasting items. Now the difference for this type of report is you'll be able to include all the fields from the forecasting items object, which is all your manager adjustment fields that may be important to you when you're looking at your submissions data. So we come over to our reports tab, we do a new report, and we'll use our brand new report type. Now let's go ahead and add the fields and filters we need. Okay, we'll save and run this. All right, so there's something really important to point out when you're using the forecasting items object within your report types. You can see that it looks like our forecast amounts are duplicated and that's because they are. So we can see that we have one record for each different value in the forecasting item category field. So if you just wanted to see your forecast category information and you didn't want to see any of your adjustments in this report, then you could filter for the forecast category to have a value. But the reason why we need the forecasting item category information is because look what we get when we look over here. So we can see which forecasting item categories have adjustments. In our cumulative rollups here, the open pipeline, best case forecast, commit forecast, these are rolling up the amounts of more than one forecast category. That's why there's no forecast category value in this column right here. So if you need to know which categories have adjustments, you need to go by the forecasting item category. And then you're going to filter for the open pipeline, best fit case forecast and commit forecast. Your closed forecast is going to be included in your commit. 
So we can see here that our amounts without adjustments, if you remember four videos ago, that we added an adjustment of $100,000 into Mina's forecast. So that's why this says 293,000 and this says 193. These are the amounts without any adjustments. And that's why this checkbox is checked here indicating that there was an adjustment made to Mina's forecast. Now, if you need some more definitions here to better understand that, we have Salesforce's API documentation, and this is where it explains the different forecast category items. So you can see here, we are on the API documentation for the forecasting item object, and then we are looking at the definitions of the forecasting item category field. And so we can see here that open pipeline is gonna be a roll up of all of our open pipeline. So if we look over here, we can see our open pipeline is gonna be this pipeline only number plus our best case, because it's gonna include everything except for closed. And then if we look at our best case forecast, that's gonna include everything after best case, including closed. This number right here, is going to be our 18,000 plus 175 plus 100,000 adjustment. So if you look over here, 193 is 175 plus 18. So that makes sense. And then our closed is showing in our commit because our commit forecast is going to show our commit plus closed opportunities. Now I can't find documentation on this custom category. This is if you have a custom forecast category set up, which we don't. So I'm not sure what these numbers are showing here. The two different ways that you can filter this report are you would look for the forecasting item category to be one of those three values. So we would look for it to be open, best case commit, and then this is going to show you the amounts with the adjustments. So that's one way to look at this. This isn't, doesn't have anything duplicated in the forecast. And then the other way that you can look at this one is you can just filter for the forecast category if you don't care about the adjustment information. So we can look for our forecast category is not equal to blank. So we'll save and run that. And then this will give you the submissions with the notes and whichever one is the latest by forecast category, as well as having the forecast amount in the report. Now there is one more report type that you could create if you wanted to have your submissions with your forecasting items, with your opportunities, and you could come and create a custom report type that shows that. So you would select your second object as your forecasting items, and then you would choose opportunities. And then you can say A records may or may not have B records and click save. And then we'll come here and create a new report for this. And now we can pull all the opportunities into our submission report. Now you can see that we do have the duplication issue again, and that's due to the same issue that we discussed about the forecasting item category. So let's go ahead and throw a filter on. We're gonna look for forecast category is not equal to no selection. So now this will give us the forecast submission information, and then it will also give us the opportunities that are making up that forecast information as well. So this can be a really helpful. Now, what you can't do in this report is you can't filter for the forecasting item category cumulative rollups and be able to see the adjustments in the same report. So that is a limitation because the adjustments aren't made at the opportunity level, they're made at the forecast category level. 
All right, so those are the three different report types that you can use with your forecasting submissions feature. That's it, that's a wrap. Be sure to subscribe to Blue Tiger Academy so you don't miss our next video that will show you how to build a custom forecast page. If there are things that you don't like about the standard forecast page, you should definitely check this out. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a video on a different Salesforce topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.